Hi everyone, it's Stefan from EBC Brakes and welcome to our Tech Talks video series. So I'm here with Steve Payne today down at our Bristol Friction Factory. Steve, what are we going to be talking about? Well hi, yeah, Steve Payne, I'm a Research and Development Manager here and um, we're going to introduce the full range of automotive friction materials, starting with the standard black OE replacement pad and right through the range to full track race material. So I'm going to be asking Steve some of the most frequently asked questions about our pad compounds and he's going to be giving us the answers. So let's get into it. So welcome back to EBC Brakes' Tech Talk series. Um, I'm here with Steve again today um, and today we're going to talk about our yellow stuff. This is one of our most popular pad compounds and there's over a million sets sold of this pad. So Steve, can you explain what, what makes it such a good pad? <laughs> well, that would be telling, wouldn't it? It's, um, the secret's all in the compound, and that's the bit we don't uh, go into detail about. But uh, yeah, this is the, the biggest runner through the factory. Uh, there it is. Um, it does a bit of everything, really. It's um, fully road legal in, in Europe with R90. Um, it's also a decent track day material, and... Um, it's, it's even raced in uh, some of the small, smaller formulas. So it's a, a bit of a jack of all trades, this one. Okay, and obviously you say it's a bit of a jack of all trades, but what was it like primarily designed for and the type of vehicles that people should be using this on? Well, any road going vehicles, um, it's, uh, it, will do, it will do the job of all the materials sort of that sit below it in the range. So if it's just being taken to the shops and back, it will work perfectly well. It has a high friction level from cold, so you don't need to heat it up like a, like a race pad. So it's got good road manners, um, but it will also take some, uh, some abuse on track. It will, it will uh, continue to work at higher temperatures than some of the, uh, the lower rated pads. And so Steve, how would these compare to like a typical OEM pad? Like, are they are they better or are they a lot better? <laughs> oh, these would compare very favourably to to an OEM pad in terms of general friction level. The the fact that they have Reg ninety tells you that they perform in a very similar way to an OEM pad through that test, but that test doesn't push the pads very hard. So as, as you continue to push these up through the temperatures, they they continue to hold on where where a lot of OE pads won't. So it's a, it's a more thermally stable material. Okay, so as you've already mentioned, you know, this this is a big upgrade over OE and we know ourselves, we've tested yellow stuff a lot on track. We've used it on our Fiesta Ultimate build uh, at Castle Coombe. Um, a lot of our sponsored drivers, whether it's drifting, uh, track racing, Gymkhana, you know, they, they all seem to have very positive feedback with this pad. And um, what is it that makes it such a good all-round pad? Well, it's a combination of a couple of things, really. It's the um, it's the compound, the uh, the makeup of the friction material itself, which is the bit we are unable to talk about because that's the Absolutely. bit that uh, you know is is, is our, our secret. Um, but it's also partly in the processing as well. This this pad goes through an extremely high temperature uh, surface treatment in processing. Which takes out some of the, uh, the the volatiles from the from the surface from the resins that hold it all together, and it um, increases its thermal stability and reduces its uh, its fade. So it's a bit of, bit of both of those things. Okay, so over the years on social media platforms and forums, a lot of people have asked: Is yellow stuff a noisy pad? Does it squeak? Does it produce a lot of dust? And I know there's been reports in the past of that happening. Has yellow stuff changed over the years? And does it, it does it still squeak? No, it doesn't. Um, not, not, not as a rule. You, you'll always get an odd application that squeaks with our pads, competitor pads, um, and so on. It's such a complex area of combination of disc and pad and even suspension items and so on that cause that, that resonance that you hear as squeal. Um, so it's, it's never been completely eliminated, um, but in general terms we get very few incidents of squeal. Uh, the material has evolved through the years. Um, it keeps its, uh, its fundamental characteristics, but it, it, it does evolve. We have to evolve uh, as time goes on. Uh, but no, it's, it's, it's a pretty low dust pad, and we get very, very few incidents of noise with it. Great stuff. And an another one from social media in the forums is, you know, in, in years gone by, people have had incidents of, like, delaminations. What have we done as a company to stop that happening? What kind of retention system do we use now on yellow stuff to, to stop that happening? 
Well, what we have, apart from the, uh, the usual um, adhesive bond between backing plate, the steel backing plate and the friction material, is a mechanical retention system as well. So we're literally pulling up hooks out of the back plate. So you've got hooks of metal sticking up out of the back plate, which the material is moulded around. So it's virtually impossible to, um, to see a separation between the friction material and the backing plate now due to that. Okay, and when I, if someone was to install these pads, could they install them on used discs or rotors, or does it have to be new? No, uh, used discs and rotors are fine. Um, we can't expect discs and pads to be changed at the same time every time. So uh, what we have is this uh, high friction compound on the front face. Um, so this will take care of any imperfections in a, a used disc, uh, maybe a bit of rust or some unevenness from the wear from yeah. the previous set of pads. And this helps the the pad to bed into the disc uh, as quickly as possible so that you get that 100% contact that you need to get your full friction level. Okay, and to get the most out of these pads, what, what is the best way to bed these in? Um, best thing to do with any pads is, is to refer to the bedding instructions that come in the box, they'll be there with every, every single set. Um, but in general terms, there's a couple of things. You're looking to bed these in physically into the shape of the disc so that you get that full contact that can take up to 500 miles, so you need to try and drive gently for the first 500 miles if you can, obviously, if you need to stamp on them, you do. The other thing is you're also thermally conditioning, despite the um, high temperature surface treatment in processing, you still need to bed these in thermally if you're going to take them on track, for example. Um, so you maybe want to run them around the track at 80% at, at of, of flat out, put them through a heat cycle, uh, let them cool down and repeat you'll feel the pedal going a little bit long initially. That's just a, a, a first fade issue. Once you get through that, the friction will come back up and settle down and you'll be good to go. Okay, well, Steve, thank you so much for answering some questions and putting some myths to bed on yellow stuff. Like I said, it, it is a, one of our best sellers. You know, there is over a million sets sold of these. Um, if you'd like to find out any more information about yellow stuff, head to the link in the description and there'll be a whole page dedicated to yellow stuff and its abilities and where you should be able to use it. So in the next episode, we're going to be talking about our blue stuff. So we will see you then.